Hi, this is the third part of the material mapping modeling tutorial. It's the uh, 3D Studio component of it. Uh, so I'm in 3D Studio just now. I'm just going to uh, show the four viewports and then we'll import the file, the AutoCAD file that we've been working on, which is currently sitting on the desktop. I've called it finished. Okay, click open. Uh, six meters wide, that's correct, that's the size we were working to. So it's rescaling it from millimeters. Uh, we can turn auto smooth on because it, uh, we do want the arches to appear smoothed. And welding is pretty low threshold, which is good. Uh, it's an accurate model anyway, so it should be fine. And click OK. Now, we'll just have a look in the select by name just to make sure there aren't any shapes in there. Everything's geometry, that's fine. And we're going to be working on the mapper object first to get the get the actual picture onto the onto the back the the kind of helper object. So that's just a simple plane that's exactly the same proportion as the photograph. Okay, so we'll go to the materials editor straight away. And the first material available is an architecture and design one, but I'm actually going to turn this into a more simple standard material. So just drag that one down where it says arch and design. If I change that and then go to materials and I want a standard material. So materials, then the standard panel, standard. Okay, then if we make this two-sided, turn off the glossiness. Okay, and then add the photographic map. So click in diffuse color and click the word none. We want to use a map, so it would be a standard type of map and then a bitmap. And we're looking for the file that we used in AutoCAD, so the same one. So photo material, pretty big image, 1.9 meg JPEG is going to take a fair bit of your resources. So you can see here it's kind of looking a bit kind of checkered. Let's let's open that up a bit bigger in its own window. Okay, looks a wee bit strange. Okay, it's because the it's using these real world coordinates to 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 tile the picture onto the object. So take that tick off and use a sample object of a cube. So it looks more realistic. Okay, we have the we uh, have the mapper object selected. Still, we can see it's selected, and then we can assign that material to the mapper object. Okay, just close the materials editor just now. You can see there's something going on here. Let's change this to uh, instead of realistic, change it to shaded with edged faces so we can see what see what we're dealing with okay there's a lot of confusion here okay don't worry about that just now if we want to just check you know we can get rid of the other geometry what you can do is go to display hide unselected that should just leave us with the main material now what I didn't do in the material settings in the materials editor was go back up to the parent level and tell it that we want to see the photograph in the shaded viewport. And that's what this icon does. Okay, you can see something's happening. Still can't see the photograph. That's because there aren't any mapping coordinates assigned. And this is how you how you dictate how the photograph goes onto the object. So let's, let's view all the viewports. So this to to make it show the other the material, we need to add another modifier. So you. We've got the object selected, go to the Modify panel, drop down the list of modifiers that are available, and you're looking for UVW map, and it, I think we're just able to see this in the, on the, the screen grab, it'll be right at the bottom, it's a bit awkward this size. So UVW map, and it's trying to project the photograph onto the object, but straight from the top down, you can see in the top view there's a square, the square here relates to this repetition of picture there. 
Okay. Now before we go any further, we want to take off real world map size again. Okay, the computer's trying to to make decisions for us, and it's not going to get them right. Okay, we want planar mapping, uh, but it's facing the wrong way at the moment. It's still trying to do it from the top down. So just put in a general size, say one meter by one meter for now, and then click here, and this will allow you to control the mapping coordinate, which is this object here, the mapping gizmo. We can control it once it's yellow. Once that goes yellow, we're just controlling this shape, and it then determines how the mapping goes on. So we want to rotate this, and we want to rotate it in a side view. So you click in the side view, you'll see that the icon, the gizmo control icon has changed. If you press the letter A, you get an angle snap. See the angle snap has gone on here. Click on the yellow circle, I'm dragging downwards, and you can see the picture is now trying to show itself in a in a proper orientation. Note the angle there has gone round 90. Okay. Now what we do is make it fit the actual shape. Click fit, and it's there. Okay. We can turn off the controller for the mapping now, and bring back on all the other objects. So go to the display panel, hide unselected. Sorry, uh, unhide all we want to do actually. My mistake, unhide all. Okay, now that material actually wants to go onto everything in the scene. So if we if we just click and drag over the whole lot, go to the materials editor, and assign that to everything in the one go. Okay, but now it's a case of getting the mapping from the mapper object onto all the others. So this has to be done one at a time. Be wiser to do it one at a time to be honest, you'll get better control. So select object individually and I've picked tiles, modify, add the UVW map modifier, but acquire the mapping. Press the letter H so you can choose the mapper object. Pick absolute. OK. So the tiles have now got the mapping. Note the real world tick turns off. Go for another object. I've got the Voussoirs now. Same process. Add the UVW map modifier. Acquire. And you can acquire from an object that's now got it. So I could acquire it from the tiles. And the mapping will be the same. OK, starting to look more realistic. Okay, let's take the keystones, UVW map, acquire the mapping, pick an object in the scene, I do it absolute. Got the pilasters, same process, modify, UVW map, Acquire, pick an object, OK. It's starting to look much better now, and all that's left now is the windows. Click OK, UVW map, acquire, pick an object, OK. Everything looks clean now. Now one of the objects needs hidden, and that's the mapper. So I've clicked just in the back there on the mapper, go to the display panel, hide selected. That cleans things up. Now I'll, I'll render that, see what happens. Okay, I'm just going to turn it over, let you see what we're what we're trying to achieve there is that the the mapping all goes in one direction. Okay, any any lines that are showing here that come to the edge of that object go back in the way. Okay, let's just we haven't got any lights here, so rendering might look a bit a bit bleak. 
okay but you can see there that the line of that motor joint is going back in now let's add some let's add a little skylight quickly so light on a standard panel we've got skylight I'll just click in the scene there added the skylight and then render again okay looking a bit more interesting a bit more realistic okay we can improve the precision add some bounces render again starts to look a bit smoother now what I'm going to do is try and modify the material slightly uh, the, remember this was a standard material so it's not taking advantage of most of the the features that mental ray can actually do so we'll go back to the materials editor and we'll copy the material uh, actually no what I'm going to do is, is just drag the diffuse map out there and copy it so I've just got the control of the photograph on its own let's go to the to the this default material and we'll assign in the standard maps area the general maps we can drag the photograph into diffuse color okay as you can see it looks pretty similar to what it did before but because it's a mental because it's now an arch and design material we've got the special effects that we can add we can add ambient occlusion and we want to assign this to all the objects in the scene so a way of doing that is to to use use um, this button is grayed out at the moment actually maybe it's because I'm, I'm on lights let's just uh, let's just check that uh, just do select uh, no it's not it's not lighting up okay go previous what I'll have to do is just select by name take the objects that we can see and assign this instead the mapping stays the same okay I'm just going to replace the material I want to see it in the viewport so everything looks exactly the same but the rendering might be improved now, I haven't tried this before I just want to see if it looks any better yeah you can see that this, it's actually trying to shade now we've got a bit more a bit more reality to, to the to the shade in there I think and that's basically how you do the the, the mapping in, in that method nice and nice and quick and very realistic and very convincing from a distance I think probably that objects a bit poking out a bit too far let's push it back in let's do that in 3d studio so all the material stays the same let's just go to a side view okay and we want to edit this shape so that's part of the pilasters shape I go to modify and edit the mesh now see the mappings disappeared that's okay we can reinstate that at the end but I want to modify vertices so firstly I'm going to push I'm going to grab all those vertices and then I'm going to push them in okay see how the the object goes in now let's do this to just some of the vertices we'll start to be giving this a bit of shape you see how that's done whoops shouldn't have done that one okay it's giving it a bit more of a profile let's leave it like that and then when you're happy with the the adjustment to the shape you you click back on the top level and that restores the mapping and a final render and we've just taken that in giving it a wee bit more shape doesn't look so uh, it's, it's protruding so much now just a quick edit there using the edit mesh command modifying the vertices okay hope you find that useful